What's up, nerds? nerds? What's up, nerds? Guys, Master here with another Magic the Gathering puzzle quest. Today's quest, Teferi Akasa of Zalfir bundle. It's the new blue-white planeswalker, as I lovingly like to refer to him as Teferi L. Jackson. Look at that face. <laughs> My man's telling you. He's saying mother something. Mother father? I don't know. So I'm gonna be doing a full review, full spotlight, and an overview of how to best maximize the abilities of said walker. He's available in the vault right now for $29.99 American USD dollars. Before we get started, thank you as always Octagon for giving me access to this planes walker. I truly do appreciate you supporting the channel the way that you guys do. But for you the viewer, I'm gonna tell you whether or not this walker is worth the IRL cash. Are they worth gold? Should you just never pick them up at all? I'm gonna give you the full scoop on their abilities here as we go forward. But before I do that, what do you get for your $29.99 American USD dollars? Let's get into it. So you get 50 gold, uh, 2,500 runes, 120 pinks. You get a regular booster pack, a blue booster pack, and a white booster pack. You get the walker himself. And if you're in VIP, uh, you get an additional 40 jewels. Let's go take a look at the walker and talk about my early first impressions. My man, they didn't even crap his face right. Look at that. He's, he's, he's off to the side. Couldn't just nudge him a bit just to get his angry face. Look at that face. What you talking about? Did I stutter? What does Marcellus Wallace look like? <laughs> Did I break your concentration? <laughs> and let's get into him. All right, so Teferi Akosa Zalfir, 97 life. Octan, what's up with these low life totals? It seems like you're just making more and more lower and lower sub 100 life, and it doesn't make much sense to me um, because they don't play well in tournaments, so maybe you guys are by design not doing that? I don't know, but it is an interesting point. All right, so we got three abilities. Let's talk about mana bonuses before we get into the abilities because those are interesting. Plus five, plus five to white and blue. You know, I like some plus fives. Plus two to black, which is good. I like that. Minus two to the other two, and then obviously loyalty don't do nothing. But So I like the mana bonuses. Um, I know that some other folks like Steve might be saying that he doesn't appreciate that color combination, but for... Or he, he Rawl is better. It's one of the comments he made in one of his live streams. If you don't know Steve, I don't know that you want to know Steve, but you should know Steve. If you have my sensibility and sense of humor, you can find him on Twitch. It's S-H-T-E-E-V, I think it is. Or 3-3-V, one of those two. Just look up Magic, the Gathering Puzzle Quest on Twitch, and you'll see him there. But at any rate, he likes Rawl because Rawl doesn't have any minuses. Minus two to green is the only thing it's got. But it doesn't have the blown as plus two. So... I actually prefer this to Rawls because it gives you more flexibility in your plus colors. So I'd rather have plus two to black than nothing at all and no negatives. So anyways, that's my opinion. You do you. you. You propagate what you propagate and you do that. To the abilities. Five loyalty for battle preparations. Discard the last card from your hand. Then draw two cards. Those cards gain five mana. Period. Hard stop. That just happens. That's good. If a creature card was discarded this way, then create two white knight tokens. I'm going to talk about those tokens here in a minute. I, I like that. At first glance, I like it just as a, a dig through your deck kind of thing. It's, it's unusual for blue, white, and Teferi specifically to have discard effects. That's more a red thing. But I like it. I think it's kind of cool. All right. Secondary ability. Nine loyalty. Valiant stand. Create three knight ship vow tokens. Knight creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance until the beginning of your next turn. Why not just permanently? I don't understand that. Let them have the permanence of that. Uh, it's nine loyalty, so okay, it's fairly cheap. It's not too expensive, but I don't, I don't understand that. I just don't for end of turn. I just don't like anything end of turn. Just if it's grumpy old gauze. Seventeen loyalty for United Chivalry. Chivalry should cavalry. Oh. Chivalry. Create eight white knight tokens. Why they gotta be white? Uh, your creatures gain can't attack and can't block until the beginning of your next turn. Reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by X. X is equal to the number of creatures you control, including the reinforcement. Okay, so this is like a spam the board, have a bunch of tokens, get all the stuff in hand for free or a massive discount. And it has reduced the cost of those cards. And that is a permanent discount while those cards are in hand. Sorry, Kilroy. But as long as those cards are in hand, they stay discounted. So if you do this multiple times, you can discount your hand significantly as you go along. That's pretty substantial, man. I really dig that. So that is, um, it's fun. The, the interesting thing here is knights and discard and draw. That's, again, a white-red combination, not necessarily a white-blue. I get it, story-wise, flavor-wise. It's kind of fun. Teferi L. Jackson is throwing a bunch of knights at you to kind of kick your tail. I dig it. But how does he play? How does it work? 
What is their synergy wise within the meta for standard right now? Oh, and FYI, it's official. Octagon has made the announcement. They're gonna be following Wizards of the Coast for a three year standard rotation. Uh, I will talk about that in my next video and all of the implications with that. It's pretty significant. I'm gonna give some demonstrations as how things need to adjust. I think it's gonna shake up our game more than you think. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Spoiler alert. Hey, real quick, before we get to the gameplay, I would love for your support for the channel. We're really close. We're just over 100 subs away from getting to 1,000 subscribers on the channel. And that means we can monetize the channel. Yes, you'll see ads, but then I'd make two nickels that I could rub together and say, see, the internet, and you can too. Uh, anyway, click like, hit subscribe, would really be appreciated. That's enough pandering, let's get to the show. All right, so let's get right into my peasant build here. I am, I played, so this is me in the future a little bit. I actually played quite a bit with this Planeswalker and it's on the edge of crazy good or meh. <laughs> And it really depends on the cards that you have available to you. So there's several different ways to bump creatures base power. There's this, the Serpentine, um, something or other, Serpentine's Yada Tide, I think it is, whatever it is. But I'm going to be using Graz, Unstoppable, Juggernaut, 22 mana, Legendary, 7-5, Artifact, Juggernaut. The beginning of combat in your turn, your other creatures gain a Juggernaut subtype until the beginning of your next turn, and the base power and toughness of that creature becomes 5-3. Bunch of other stuff, doesn't really matter. That's the most important bit. So... We want to make our knight tokens buffy or buffer. I have a challenge with the knight tokens. The first deck I built centered around knights, other knight cards, other knight synergies. And the knight cards have an ally subtext. They don't work with the other. We have like at least three different types of knight uh, token cards inside of standard right now. And it's really annoying. They don't synergize. They don't, they, you can't just lump them into one another. What I would really love to see this card have, like this token would be leader for knight. Um, so that other knight token cards that we try to synergize for actually wind up joining forces and only taking up one creature slot. Octagon, you guys, any kind of token that you guys introduce really should have some type of, I don't know, uh, knight or, or any kind of kind of sub creature type consolidation effect maybe not even leader maybe just take the base power and just add it together so that if you're creating a bunch of one ones and a bunch of two twos uh one one and a two two would make a three three so it's adding the power not multiplying the power by the number of reinforcements i don't know i don't know how you guys are coding this stuff i have no idea i'm not a coder i have no idea how difficult it is to do but i appreciate you anyways all right so grass is where we start to boost our power you want to get into your third ability as quickly as possible. Now, this is a peasant. The only two cards right now that are good at getting into your loyalty ramp and getting into your third are in Mythic. So I'll talk about those in my Mythic build. But for right now, Cut Your Losses is a nice way of destroying, blowing up a couple of your little creatures, casting Cut Your Losses a couple of times, and then ultimately ramping into your ultimate when you want to do it. I'll demonstrate hopefully here in play. Endless Detour, it's the fancy one. Really, we're just taking their first creature. It deals with vanguards, takes with creatures off the board. It's only target. So if it's untargeted or if they have hexproof, you're kind of hosed. Better cards, Void Rend, even Broker's Charm can be effective, except there's a lot of cards now that have prevent damage and Broker's Charm is losing ground where it was my absolute favorite. Void Rend and Broker's Charm combined are kind of what you must do because you get tired of seeing me play the same card. So I'm running Endless Detour. It's a different card to run with. Draw is very important for Teferi, uh, L. Jackson. You have to have a lot of draw. And since we're going to be focusing on tokens here, every token that hits the board draws us a new card. We want to keep our hands full so that when we hit our ultimate, we give those cards m reductions in mana cost so we can keep casting and doing a bunch of stuff. And, Broker's Charm. and uh, time reversal. Now again, draw is critical. So we want to wield a hand and get the stuff out there. Here's another one, Transcendent Message. Seven mana when you match three or more blue gems in this card is in your hand, increase its cards level by one. If you don't, you just draw one. So something to bear in mind while you do that. Now, this next strategy is very important. I know, I know that if we just wait around and we attack with those creatures, we're going to be swinging with something pretty mighty, especially if our juggernaut is on the board. I'm not a patient man when it comes to win it now strategy. So I want to introduce you to Extraction Specialist. This is a seven mana. Guess where it's from? Streets of New Capenna. It's Lifelink, Defender, 3-2, White, Human Rogue. When this creature enters the battlefield, return the first creature with base mana cost eight or less. That would be itself. It does work on itself. From your graveyard to the battlefield under your control. That creature gains can't attack and can't block. When this creature leaves the battlefield, creatures you control lose can't attack and can't block. So if you're replacing this creature, which we have several tokens, this would put us over that token threshold with the next card I'm going to show you. 
Um, so then when we replace this card, that triggers. If we destroy this card with cut your losses, this triggers. So there's a couple of different ways to remove this from the board that actually removes can't attack and can't block. And thus we can swing with our big tokies right away. Tokies for the win. Last couple of cards here, Blade of Shared Souls. So we can get the four Mirrodin token on the board. Or if we're behind, we can actually take some of their creatures, put it on our side of the board. It's a really stupid good card. It's an acronym for BOSS, B-O-S-S. It is a boss card. Angel Fire Ignition for the life game, little haste, because we don't want to wait if those tokens are brand new as we go. All right, there's a look at the deck. Click, click. Let's get into it. All right, so we're up against Nissa Vital Energy. All right, so uh, time reversal. We're just going to mute that down and go. Actually, I don't mind casting Broker's Charm first here. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So there is Extraction Specialist. I'm going to hold on to that. We really just want to ramp into our third ability as quickly as possible. Demonstrating the first ability, what we're going to do is actually drop this creature and draw two cards. That way we get the knight tokens. Boom and boom, we get those. Get the knight tokens, there we go. What else did we draw? We drew into a Rite of Harmony, which I like. We like those. So we're gonna use that to draw some cards. And I don't even mind doing that. Um, with Blade of Shared Soul, so we can duplicate uh, the tokens and get some results out of those. Let's go white here. Try to preserve our blue gems on uh, board so that when we do do our cut your losses, we get a lot of that stuff out here. We're going to go ahead and nuke our creatures because we just want to keep a massive cards level in hand. Draw the cards with Rite of Harmony. We're going to wheel our hand with Time Reversal. So we can draw into our cards, use all the blue manas that are now on gem, uh, all blue gems on board that are now there to fill our hand up. Endless Detour. I don't mind putting one of those creatures back on my deck. Let's do it for ourselves. Angel Fire Ignition. And let's see what else we got here. So we're pretty much stacked now here for all the creatures we got. Rite of Harmony fills our hand back up. We're almost to our third ability, and we're going to go from there. Let's see if we can get that to pop. And if I don't have a uh, Cut Your Losses at hand, which I do, actually, uh, and I do I have a Graz on board? I do not. So we want to do that first, and then we're able to set up our next bit that we're going to do. So with that said, do we have any Knights now? Uh, we do not. So let's go ahead and ditch. We're going to ditch Angel Fire, cancel. I'm going to ditch Broker's Charm. I'm going to use our first ability. Yes. I'm going to get a Knight on the board, draw two cards. Boom, boom, those gain some mana. Let's see if that does anything else for me. It did, okay, cool, so I got it. Convert the board, I can crush you to get another one. Because we're gonna put a grass on the board, we have to replace it anyways. Uh, we made more blue matches, we're getting more grass on the board, and we should eventually get to our third ability here, but with every creature we put out. Uh, let's go ahead and give our grass beefiness and fit haste because he's our bigger creature for sure. We're gonna go ahead and make a duplicate of him. We're not gonna do uh, that because we want, we want that creature on the board for when we demonstrate our third. All right, uh, Endless Detour, sure, we'll put our own card on our, our deck, so we don't care. All right, so we gain some life, have a big body in the board. Okay, so we're not still up to our third ability. Again, I'm going to demonstrate destroying my knight just for the purpose of demonstrating this ability. Oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> not enough. And even this, this just demonstrates real quickly, just swinging with big, you know, big creatures and kind of following this along, it does work. But let's, let's do this. So we're going to now destroy our knight. And then we're up to our third, so I can demonstrate the one-time casting. So even if I just didn't do this, if I just added creatures on the board, I could win eventually. But we want to show you the power of the OTK, the come from behind, if that makes sense. Giggle, giggle. All right, so this has tons of mana. Let's see what we get here. Boom, there's another extraction specialist. We're going to wheel the hand again. Wheeling the hand controls their hand as well. Uh, transcendent. Time reversal. We're going to do that again. All right, another grass for that grass. We have a five swap down there if we don't have another um, cut your losses cast. We have plenty of mana. Look at this. This is brutal. Kind of a win more situation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do our third ability, and you're going to see that everybody here 
All right, so we're gonna take Blade of Shared Souls, put it in second position, and we're going to cast Cut Your Losses. Since everything's full mana, we're just gonna to try to ramp up in our next ability. You want to destroy your Extraction Specialist with Cut Your Losses, since it doesn't have to prevent damage. Now, when it leaves the board, every other creature you have now has lost, can't attack, can't block, so they can now swing and attack. Now, if I had a, um, I'll replace that one just in case. So that brings all of the other extraction specialists back to the board. Why did it only draw one card? That's very interesting. I should have drawn a card for every time that came into play because I have the other one in, on board, don't I? All right, so there's that. Let's hope I get into a uh, uh, Angel Fire Ignition. <laughs> nope. Let's see if I draw some cards into an Angel Fire Ignition. You, let's go here, let's see. Nope, didn't go, but it won. If I'd have had an Angel Fire Ignition, I could have given it to my guy. He would have had Vigilance, he would have swung for the game and won. Okay, so you can kind of see that that kind of works. It really, it's just a fast deck that wins. It's good, it's nice and synergized. The first ability that allows you to wheel through your progressions to get the stuff done that you want to. Um, it's effective, it's, it's like almost there. It's, missing one or two cards that would allow it to really kind of go ham. Let's see if we can find those cards in our mythic build, shall we? Okay, here's our mythic build. Broker's Charm, the regular one. Uh, cut your losses. You know why. You've demonstrated it. Void Rend to be able to deal with some of the uh, uh, vanguards that are going to be prevalent in play. All right, so this one, Nahiri the Unforgiving. I made a comment about this in my Discord. You should get in the Discord if you're not in the Discord because I give early tips on, on playing the Planeswalker as I'm play testing and I kind of give my comments there. This Vanguard sucks everywhere except for in Teferi because of this first ability right here. Target creature loses, can't attack, and gains Berserker until the beginning of your next turn. So it allows you to be able to take the creature even if you don't use the evangelist whatever specialty you can still target your tokens and be able to use that angel fire ignition for the haste that they need transcendent message for the draw just like we did before Jin Gataxia's core auger fills your hand at the beginning of your turn so if he's on the board you get a full hand what better way to use your third ability than with a full hand of cards right this allows you to do that without all the shenanigans take flight I want my tokens to have flight and indestructible Faithbound Judge for the Yard for all of the uh, loyalty ramp. And then Ram Carlos Stalwart Slayer. Here's a picture. Click, click. Click, click. So that you can see I want my creature to have flight. My tokens knights to be flying so they can defend against Dahada. Smash 666's shenanigans. Let's get into it. Now the other creature that you could use to be able to do loyalty ramp is uh, Sigarda Host of Herons. Really good card. You like Void Rens? The challenge is you have to have creatures that are blocking and able to do the things that you need them to in advance. That's okay. The challenge becomes, though, that if you don't have a blocker on board, then you struggle. The synergy that you wind up having here with Faithbound Judge is you use your first ability, put that creature into the yard. We're never putting that creature, we're never putting Faithbound on the board. We're only using him as loyalty ramp so we can get him to do the things we want to do later on. Let's hope they don't take the white match, but of course they're going to take the white match. There's Faithbound right there, but we're not into our first ability, so we're going to wait for using that. In fact, let's go here. Boom. So we're into our first. Check it out like a stud. And we're going to use that and fire that off here in just a second to draw two cards. Take flight. We don't need the second. Void Ren, we don't need two of you right now, but we will hold off on that. We're going to use our first ability, discard the card, draw two cards, and we're going to get two knights on the board. In addition to that, we're also going to give them uh, Angel Fire Ignition. Can we do it twice? Actually, what we want to do really is take flight here. Demonstrate my wall of safety precautions. Anywhere we do not, we have blue though, so we'll take that. All right, so now our knights are bulletproof. Dahada's gonna rely on exile because she's got white. All right, there is that. Let's go here. All right, so let's do that. And then we're gonna go here. We want to get into our third as quickly as possible. Did I have a white match anywhere? I didn't even check. No, we didn't. All right. So hopefully she does something that white match. Nope, of course not. She's gonna get ridiculous drops. Not worried about that. I'll go here, boom. Well done, great drop, good cascades. Got some bulletproof. The, again, synergy cut your losses and uh, prevent damage creature. I get to fire that off twice. I'm gonna use uh, Angel Fire Ignition on my tokens, on my knight tokens. I'm up to my third ability here. 
I'm going to go ahead and use Take Flight on my tokens. So now they have Flying, Vigilance, Bulletproof, uh, Life Gain, temporarily, Haste, um, and, oh, and Trample as well. And then Broker's Charm just eliminates any threat that would possibly hit the board. Now I've got a Bulletproof Wall, an 8-6, that's going to be climbing here when I actually master my next ability. I need Nahiri. There's Jin Kataxius. Let's get it done, man. Let's get it done. All right, they have an empty board. What's their life at? 72. And we're at full health, and this is a powerful build, and we're ready to use our third. All right, so we don't need more take flight. We do want him here. I am not actually going to fire my third this second. I am going to use my first because I'm digging towards Nahiri. Boom, boom. There she is. Hello, sugar plum. And we're going to use that in our next ability. Uh, we want to get that out ASAP. And we have a five match, so we'll take that. And we'll get Jin on the board too. Why not? Let's go ahead and discard a card and draw a card. Boom, boom. More Void Ren. You like Void Rens? Let's go blue. Boom. So now we got Jin on the board. Draw another Nahiri. Yay. Uh, right Harmony takes the place of Jin Kataxis um, as your draw engine in the Popper or Peasant build, rather. All right, they're they're starting to get they're starting to get stanky over there. All right, here we go. This is our time to shine. Let's get rid of that. Let's get. I guess we can keep all of these. I'll put this up here. Put this up here. Um, we're gonna use our third ability. First, everything gets wanky here, right? Boom, boom, boom. We get all the free stuff up here. We're going to use our first ability, put it on our creature here. So now he's able to swing now, clearly. Go black match, it doesn't matter. We have full mana. Destroy their first creature so that we're not absorbing them with that. Uh, take flight, we'll give Jin Kataxis some, some wings. And we do not mind exhausting our hand here. Ideally, we want to have a white match. We want to have our third ability on board, which I'm going to demonstrate here next. But he took, she took my white match. Thanks for that. And there's more, more, more. Draw my cards. I'm going to go ahead and ditch another one of those. Draw two cards. Get a knight. Boom, boom. They gain five mana. Fun in it. All right, there we go. That's game. Boom. All right. So there you see, that's how that works. It removes that for you. It, again, it's, it's like, it's so close to being dynamic and dominant and overpowered, but it's just not there, man. It's just not there. So let me give you my final thoughts. All right, so what do I think of Teferi Akasa of Zalafar? It's the one that says bad mother, mother father. Um, so I, I actually like him. I like him just enough that I, I, would, I, I, I would recommend him for somebody like this play style. If you're into this, what I just kind of demonstrated, it needs some putzing. There's probably a card or two that I'm missing that, that I'm not seeing that would take these builds over the top or really take his builds to the next level. Maybe there's some cards that I just haven't gotten yet from the March of Machines release from Mommy that would make it dominant um, that I just haven't played enough with. Uh, case in point, uh, maybe um, Galta. Galta and Marvin. I probably should have ran this. I just pulled this. I just started play testing it in, in my mastering decks. So uh, this is probably a good one to start messing with. The challenge is it costs 25 mana. So you've got to ramp into him to get it down. Uh, another one could be uh, Diru and Hazaret. That's our Jeru and Hazaret. I'm going to be spotlighting some builds with them. Maybe I'll feature that within this deck build. Uh, but again, the tokens, once I have these two down, that's it. I, can't, I have no room else for anything else. This is a great card that probably combos with it well that I just haven't focused on. But uh, Jeru and Hazaret. Jeru? Jeru? How do we pronounce that, guys? Let me know in the chat. The big thing here is I get to go pull a legendary creature out of hand, so I get to go put this on the board for free. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's probably the synergy there that I, I'm missing, and it, it becomes probably much better to play with. Now, the key is you gotta have those cards. That's my point. He's really good. If, if you have Faithbound Judge, he becomes a lot higher in the ability to go ramp into your third and just spam it. And even if you don't get the tricks I have here for lose, can't attack, can't block, um, and you just wait the turn, 
it's still dominant. It's still very powerful. It puts it in the A category. Or Cigar to Host of Herons is a close second. Uh, it's actually a distant second. First is by far Faith Bound Judge. Second would be Cigar to Host of Herons to ramp in your third. And then if not, then ways to maximize, maybe prevent damage with uh, Remy. And then cut your losses and just spamming those as much as you can. Uh, routing, wheeling your hand to draw into that to cast it again. To ramp you up into your third and then do it that way. If you have extraction specialists, it's, it's a card to consider. All of the cards that I featured here, if you have those, it becomes more viable for you to, to, to consider making the purchase. If you like this play style, it is fun. I enjoy this. This guy definitely falls in the fun category for me. I will be featuring him and looking for cards that will spotlight him and best work with him. And the cards that I just showed, Hazard and Jeru, and, or Jeru and Hazard, and um, uh, the, the dinosaur, the dinosaur and the vampire, um, those two together uh, are going to be in standard for another three years. So those aren't going anywhere and they produce good stuff. Ovika is another one that could work really well with it. Ovika is blue and red. So you can use Ovika and the goblins that it produces as great token creators as well. It's another one that you can consider running with. There's a lot of token creators right now that are very, very powerful um, between those two creatures, Ovika and then the dragon and the vampire guy. All that said, it's just very interesting. The life total, a little too low, but okay. Um, there's enough life gain in white that you can overcome that and maybe circumvent it. Love the first ability. I think the first ability is really good. I really wish it would be just one night for no creature and two or three nights for ditching a creature into your yard because, again, tokens take up a slot, so you can only run two or three creatures max. Uh, if you're going to be functional, and that's if you have Faithbound Judge and you're throwing it in the yard, never planning on putting it on board unless you have to. Valiant Stand. I didn't even demonstrate Valiant Stand. I'm going to do an overview of what Valiant Stand does here. Valiant Stand is not very impressive. It gives your creature first strike and vigilance until the beginning of your next turn. It should be permanent. The Night Ship Vow token at the beginning of your opponent's turn, your opponent may drain X mana from their hand. X is the number of night creatures you control, including their reinforcements. If you don't, their night creatures gain hexproof until the end of turn. I would rather they get prevent damage versus hexproof or hexproof and prevent damage until the end of next turn. Um, it's just not something Greg's going to do. And if they have prevent damage, then it allows you to do some more things with it. It's just not... I never use it. And I, I clearly demonstrated not using it because the end of turn stuff. If you gave me first strike and vigilance permanently, be worthwhile to do as a stagger step towards getting to your third. Really, it's all about your third. Create eight white knight tokens. Your creatures get can't attack, can't block until the beginning of your next turn. Reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by yeah, that. That's stupid good. And it's cheap. Five, nine, and 17 are all very relatively priced. Very good. I would rather the Valiant stand were seven mana, maybe. And then when it's a turn where I can't really use my first or second. I mean, is there ever a time you're not going to use your first, honestly, compared to your second? Was there ever a turn I didn't use my first if I didn't pull my third off, right? That's just what you're going to do. You're going to spam the first. You're going to use the third as often as you can. If you have loyalty ramp, you will use that third a lot. And if you have the tricks that I demonstrated here between um, extraction specialist and or uh, see the Nahiri Vanguard, you wind up putting yourself in a position where you can use it right away. And it becomes very good. That's the other one, Nahiri uh, Vanguard. If you have that junk Vanguard then it winds up becoming something that you can do very, very effectively. And not to mention our secondary plus one allows you to, to wheel your hand to get to the pieces you need to pull off the combos. I just was running out of time, so I just wanted to get something out to you so you could see it. Also, mana bonuses. Not as good as Rawls, but still great. Plus five, plus five to blue. I love the plus two to black. I love it. Um, and the minuses, I don't mind because... The plus two to black, especially if I'm trying to avoid making blue matches so I can maximize my cut your losses conversions, it's great to have the plus five to white, but if the board's thin because most everybody's playing white and blue right now, Dakin and um, who else? Narset too. Narset's going to be fired up. You're going to see more Narsets coming out because of the combos that are available for a word thread. Uh, it just limits what you have available on the board, especially if you're wanting to use time reversals, mana gains, or if you're trying to keep enough blue mana on so that when you are using um, 
cut your losses, you get maximum conversions. Now, is there anything more frustrating than firing off, finally saving up enough mana to fire off a cut your losses and it doesn't make a match and gives your opponent a five swap on their turn? Brutal, especially when they're playing a blue walker, most likely. So where do I finally rank him onto fairies? If you're a collector of Planeswalkers, you have all the collectors, he's a lot of fun. Get him, you're gonna enjoy him. You know, do you, is he worth the $29.99 American USD dollars? That's for you to decide. If what I demonstrated here for you looks like fun, then he's definitely worth picking up because he's a blast. Support the game, yay. Um, if you're a type of person that's newer to playing and you're not sure if he's worth picking up, um, in comparison to like Dakin, no, no, Dakin's always number one. Always go get Dakin, uh, Shadow Slayer. He's the best planeswalker in the game, period, hands down. You'll win more, you get more resources, and you go get more fun ones. This guy's definitely in the fun category. If we could just get over that last 10% of cards needed or just even better synergy, like if they made the adjustment on the first ability and gave it a plus one night or just one night, that would be something. That would, that would do something. I would rather were two and three, two or four. Two nights for for um, no or for any card discarded, and four nights for a creature discarded. That would be great. That would make that first ability bonkers good, and a good catalyst for every other thing we have in play right now, like cut your losses and things like that, to be played off with. Any casualty effects would be really good with it. For the middle of the range folks, is this going to help me win more? Like I have medium collections, I have medium collect uh, planeswalkers. Am I going to use this planeswalker more than Dakin? No, if I already have Dakin. Um, but he is fun in that there's a lot of stuff you can do with him to wheel your hand and get the stuff for free. Now, I say all of that so I can also tell you this. There's another way you can get to Fairy's deal um, for the most part and get it with any blue-white planeswalker, any blue planeswalker. And that would be having Jin Kataxis, uh, the auger, core auger that I just demonstrated a second ago, fooling your hand up, and then two Tamios. Uh, field researcher vanguards on the board. If you have those, then essentially you're creating the same effect in any blue planeswalker that you want to be able to use, and you can create the same effect every single turn. It's a crazy combo. I'll demonstrate it in the video at some point. Big advantage here is Teferi gets you all those night tokens, but then they're disabled. If they weren't disabled, I'd say this is much more powerful. Because they are disabled and because you have to get trickery and build into your deck trickery to get it to fire off and swing this turn, yeah, maybe not as strong as that combo, but a lot of fun. I would rank him as he is a B, a high B, but a B. If you have the cards I demonstrated, he can be a low A. If you don't have those cards, he can actually be pretty frustrating. I recorded a game for this that was like 25 minutes long, and I cut it because it just was too long. It take, Some games take that long. Um, some videos take that long. <laughs> that said, those are my thoughts on it. Is he worth the IRL cash? Uh, that is up to you. Is he worth the gold? Well, if you're a collector and you just want to play them all, you're going to get them all anyways. Yeah, he absolutely is going to be worth the 650 gold. Um, if you're needing him to make a big impact to your roster for Planeswalkers, uh, Hero Dominaria is probably going to be a little more reliable for you. Uh, but this one is pretty darn fun. I really like that third ability. With that said, I appreciate you. You could have been anywhere in the world just to spend this time with me here. It is appreciated. Uh, comment, join the Discord, support the channel, like and subscribe. We're almost to 1,000 subs. We're really getting close. We're just under 150 or just over 150. And you, every subscription matters. Get your moms to, to subscribe, get your dogs to subscribe, but then have them engage and watch your content too because that matters as well. As always, my friends, you are the best. I appreciate you. Get in the Discord. Let me know what you think. I'll be spotlighting other builds, other cards. If you have a build, if you've got them already and you think he's absolutely fantastic and you have something that's just broken, put it in the Discord. I'd love to see it. Until our next quest, my friend. Swords up. You read the Bible, Greg? Yes. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. It sort of fits this occasion. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. <laughs>